Growing seedlings for reforestation or enrichment purposes starts with acorn collection and ends with seedlings ready for planting. Depending on the species you choose, this can take one and a half or two and a half years. Oaks can produce a heavy acorn crop in some years, called masting years, while they may have little to no acorn production in other years. This irregularity varies among species and locations, so remember to be flexible in your planning. We will cover six topics in this video. Species selection, tree location, nursery coordination, collection preparation, collection procedures, and processing and storage. The first step in an acorn collection is to decide which species you want to collect. Eastern North American oaks are divided into two general groups, the white oak group and the red or black oak group. The primary difference between the two groups is that white oaks have acorns that mature on the tree in one growing season, while red or black oaks have acorns maturing over two growing seasons. Generally, white oaks have leaves with rounded leaf lobe ends and no bristles. Red or black oaks have pointed leaf lobes that end with a short bristle. Consult a tree identification book with a taxonomic key and good images for each species. The Silvix of Forest Trees in the United States, easily found online, is a good reference for general information on oak species. Trees from the white oak group will produce flowers in the spring, followed by pollination and fertilization. The acorn will then grow to maturity over the growing season. Red or black oaks will produce flowers in the spring also, but only pollination happens at this time. Fertilization will occur in the second growing season. The pollinated female flowers, which we call acornets, look like small acorns on stalks. It is possible to have both acornets and acorns on the same tree in red or black oak species. Trees are long-lived organisms, so it is best to use acorns collected from locally adapted trees that occur naturally rather than from trees that might have been planted. Choose easily accessible trees from desirable sites such as old cemeteries orchards, field edges, and forest openings. Undesirable sites include neighborhood yards and urbanized areas where trees are likely planted and have an unknown origin. If there are no acorns in your area, consult the online seed zone maps in the Eastern Seed Zone Forum to find collection areas that are environmentally similar to yours. Although oaks never hybridize between the white oak group and the red or black oak group, they do hybridize within the groups, as seen here with this white and chestnut oak hybrid acorn. Use dendrology keys or books to make sure you are collecting the desired species and not acorns from a hybrid. You can consult experienced foresters or botanists or access the online version of the Checklist of United States Trees for a list of interspecific hybrids for each oak species. Decide how many trees, referred to as mother trees, are needed for your collection. A good rule of thumb is to collect from a diverse number of mother trees within the same or adjacent seed collection zone and similar elevation as the area you wish to plant. Plan to capture genetic diversity by collecting equal amounts from at least 10 mother trees spaced at least a quarter mile apart. Ideally, the trees should have good form, clear boles, and abundant acorns. Use binoculars to examine tree crowns. You can survey red oak species in the dormant season for the presence of acornets, which are the first year acorns. An acornet survey can indicate whether you will have a crop the following fall, but you should follow up with the survey in late August or early September since many unfavorable things can happen to acornets and acorns as they mature. Acorns from both white and red or black oak groups typically become readily visible in late August or early September. By mid-August, the caps are usually full-sized, but the acorns are still filling out and will become more prominent later in the month. A few months prior to your acorn collection, partner with a nursery to grow the acorns into seedlings. Coordinate and consult with the nursery manager regarding time and weather-sensitive aspects like nursery bed fumigation, bed preparation schedules, and planting time. Inquire about any species-specific viability tests or acorn collection weight estimates they may prefer and determine if they want you to process your acorns or if they can do that for you. If you plan to have a large collection, ask if they may be able to help with large collection sizing procedures, like using a sizing machine. This is also a good time to discuss costs and logistics of acorn transfer and to schedule the seedling delivery or pickup. 
When you are ready to begin your collection, start by gathering the materials and supplies you will need. Use cloth bags, gunny sacks, or buckets to collect the acorns. Use twine to close your bags or gunny sacks and attach flexible, identifying metal tags to these bags. Use an indelible marking pen for labeling. It can be helpful to use rakes or leaf blowers to remove debris and leaves to increase visibility of dropped acorns. Alternatively, you can place tarps or nets under your trees. For large collections, you can use a push wheel with flexible fingers. Because acorns are like fresh fruit in that they are sensitive to environmental conditions, after they are harvested, you will need refrigeration to store the acorns before and after processing. If you do not have refrigeration resources, keep them in a cool room out of the sun and protected from predation. For processing your acorns, use watertight buckets, tubs, or sinks, and a strainer for testing acorn viability. You will need tables or screens for drying. For calculating the number of acorns in your collection, you will need two scale types, a small scale with a precision to a gram and a large scale with a capacity to weigh five to 50 pounds. Most nurseries have scales that you can use if you do not have your own available. For storage after processing, you will need polyethylene bags with double zipper seals, two mil weight for white oak group species and four mil for red or black oak group species. Following proper procedures while you are collecting will ensure that acorn quality is maintained over time. The best time to collect large quantities of acorns is during the peak acorn drop, which varies by location. For example, mid to late October in middle and eastern Tennessee is peak acorn drop, while generally the drop is later in western Tennessee. Consult foresters in your area to determine the peak drop time. Because acorn drop can vary greatly among trees, closely monitor them. When peak drop occurs, collect as soon as the acorns hit the ground to reduce predation. Weather events affect acorn drop, with rain causing the acorns to tighten in their caps, while cold snaps will accelerate drop. Acorns that drop during the first week or so in the season are usually heavily damaged by insects. Acorn quality will generally improve as the season progresses. Discard the acorns that are green, damaged, rotted, cracked, riddled with holes, or still have their caps. Do not use force to remove adhered caps as fungus will enter and kill the acorn through open vessels caused by cap removal. Burr and overcup oak acorns normally retain their caps, so do not discard acorns of these species based on cap presence. The acorns from the red or black oak group generally do not germinate until after planting and can be stored longer than species in the white oak group. Many white oak species will begin germination soon after dropping or if left on the ground too long. You need to collect them before the radicals become extended longer than a quarter of an inch. Long radicals tend to rot in storage before planting, which will degrade seedling quality. Germination of white oak species can be very problematic because radicals emerge and grow very quickly after dropping. However, two white oak group species, overcup and burr, behave more like red or black oak group species and do not germinate until after planting. Store your acorns under refrigeration or in a cool, dark place protected from predators as soon as possible after collection. To process your acorns, begin by floating them in tubs or sinks filled with water. Discard the floating acorns. These have been heavily damaged by insects and tend to germinate poorly. Acorns prone to germination before planting should be floated only for a maximum of five minutes as water promotes germination and radical growth. For other oak species, you can leave the acorns in water for longer periods. Use your strainer to discard all the acorns that float, even though some of them look healthy. The sinking acorns are viable, healthy acorns. It is important to note that not all acorn quality is tested by floating, such as overcup or burr oaks. Those species usually retain their caps and naturally float. Immediately remove the sinkers from the water and let them air dry on a flat, dry surface and not in direct sun. Drying the acorns on screens works well. In a short time, the acorns should be dry to the touch. You will want to be conservative and discard only the smallest acorns. For example, the acorns from northern red oaks that are greater than half an inch will help improve seedling size. You can size them by visual inspection or by using a grid sheet. For larger collections, you can use sizing screens. Once you have selected the acorns for planting, you can estimate the number of acorns you have by their weight. 
The most accurate method of estimating your number of acorns is to first mix your acorns well to distribute sizes and mother tree sources, and then randomly select 100 acorns. Weigh the sample, then weigh your entire collection of acorns. Divide the total weight of the acorns by the sample weight. Multiply the result by 100 to estimate the total number of acorns. If you don't have a scale, then consult the Woody Plant Seed Manual on how many acorns are in a pound for the species you have collected. Keep in mind that these estimates are most likely for acorns that have not been processed using the float sink test that we described earlier. Therefore, the estimates from the Woody Plant Seed Manual may overestimate the quantity of sound acorns. We have developed our own estimates from Tennessee orchards for sound acorns processed using the float sink test. Northern red oaks generally yield 62 to 77 acorns per pound and white oaks yield 150 to 160 acorns per pound. Be aware that acorn weights can vary among trees in years due to rainfall, insect predation, and other factors. The best practice is to deliver your acorns for sowing as soon as the nursery can accept them. If you cannot deliver them right away, return your collection to refrigeration or a cool room. Do not freeze the acorns. The best storage is a walk-in cooler at 36 to 40 degrees with humidity less than 50%. For short-term storage of processed acorns, it is best to use cloth bags, although acorns and cloth bags can dry out after two months as seen here with these white oak acorns. You can also use the polyethylene bags specific to species as mentioned previously to ensure adequate moisture exchange and to limit mold. Although it is not ideal, if you need to store them for an extended period, you may want to consider quickly dipping your sinking acorns for five to 10 seconds in a 5% bleach solution directly after the float sink test. The final step is to deliver your acorns to the nursery. Following these practices and techniques will support the success of growing healthy seedlings for reforestation or enrichment of our nation's oak forests.